Good evening, sir. The topic of our presentation today is post correspondence problem. Our team member is includes Mridanku Brahma, Niladri Ghosh, Neha Raj, and myself, Harshita Raj. So, before starting, I would like to thank you, sir, for giving us this opportunity to complete this presentation. In process, we have learned a lot. So, the topic that I, that I told that, uh, that is the post correspondence problem. So, uh, post, so in this problem, uh, uh, therefore, uh, I would like to start with a brief introduction. There, it is a problem. The problem is undecidable if there is no Turing machine, which will always work, which will always work in a uh, finite amount of time to give answer yes or no. An undecidable problem has no algorithm to def, uh, to determine the answer uh, for a given input. It is basically like a game, or like jigsaw puzzles. So, where it has to be solved with a process or a technique, there is no particular sort of algorithm. The diagram here I have uh, shown tells us uh, about like if we have regular grammar which is solved by uh, finite automaton machines, context-free grammar is solved uh, with uh, pushdown automaton, context-sensitive is solved with linear-bounded automaton, uh, and other other uh, other things are solved. Uh, other uh, stages like recursive and recursively enumerable is solved with the Turing machine, but our, our, our the, the problems that are out of this uh, range are called basically undecidable problems. So the topic that we are going to cover in this presentation will be post correspondence problem, modified post correspondence problem, representing uh, representing PS, uh, PS, PCP or MPCP instances, representation of on PCP, undecidability of PCP problem and variance of, of PCP. So let's start. So the post correspondence problem is an undecidable decision problem that is used to determine the undecidability of strings because it is simpler than halting problem and the n skew dunks problem it is often used in proofs of undecidability. It is it, talking about the history of this. It is what it was introduced by Emil Leon Post in 1946. The aim is to arrange the types in such a manner that the string made of by, made by numerators and by the denominators is same. So the other class is modified post correspondence problem. So here it is just like PCP or post correspondence problem. That but here the but here the difference is that we specify both the set of types and also a special type matches for P, P, P M P C P have to start with a special type. So uh, talking about representation of PSP or P, M P C P uh, C P instances. Uh, so uh, say the ith symbol will be coded. A followed by I in binary, commas and parentheses can represent themselves. Thus, we have a finite alphabet in which all instances of P, PCP or, M, or MP CP can be represented. Let's let let us consider that L P, PCP, which is shown on the screen, and L M P C P will be the languages of coded instances for for PCP or P, M P C P respectively uh, that that have a solution. So here I am coming up with an example where we have two lists M and um, N and the values of the and the numbers that and the values that the list contains is shown on the screen. So uh, so we have to basically find it whether this post whether this post correspondence has a solution or not. So as I told that the numerator the number of the tiles the number that, or the pattern that is in the uh, numerator should be equal should be equal or same to be as in the denominator. So uh, firstly in this case we are uh, so it goes step by step. First we have to consider that case where the first characters are uh, equal like uh, in the case of two and three or which we can see on the screen we have starting symbol A so we can take either of the parts and but we have here started in this question with the taking the two part so uh, we can consider that double a by triple a we'll be getting one extra in the, denom in the denominator so uh, to compensate that we can add uh, with, we can add one uh, the part of one to get the uh, equal number of a in the numerator part but uh, but by adding the equal um, but by adding the part one we'll be getting x1 extra a in the uh, in the denominator in the uh, numerator part uh, in the denominator part again so the compulsion will be adding the third part also so finally we'll getting x2 x1 x3 which is a triple a double b and triple a and for the denominator part also we are getting the same pattern so basically we have solved the problem and we can see that this is as a solution and where the solution is i is equal to 2 j is equal to 1 k is equal to 3 so get so to get deep into this all this topic i would like to uh, uh, call my friend Nenadri to elaborate
थैंक यू हर्षिता वेरी गुड इवनिंग सर एंड वेरी गुड इवनिंग टू ऑल माई फ्रेंड्स माई नेम इज नीलाद्री घोष एंड आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द रिप्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ पोस्ट कॉरेस्पॉन्डेंस प्रॉब्लम सो पोस्ट कॉरेस्पॉन्डेंस प्रॉब्लम कैन बी ब्रॉडली क्लासिफाइड इन टू टू वेज द प्रीवियस लाइफ post correspondence problem can be broadly classified into two types uh, one is the dominos form another is the table form so let me explain uh, both of these to you so uh, what does this domino form actually do so in uh, both these formats we have used the same example so uh, in the dominos form we can see that we are having four tiles and in each tile we are having a numerator and a denominator so uh, what can we find out from it well we can uh, well we can uh, come to the conclusion that Uh, here in we are having two lists in both of these lists there are four tiles and we are representing uh, so like i said in the dominos form now moving on to the table form to get a proper concept of it so how does this actually work so uh, from the table format we are getting a better view that actually we are having two lists which is named as numerator and denominator over here and we are having four serial numbers which are acting as the four tiles as we are seeing in the dominos form so uh, now let me uh, compare both of uh, now let me compare both of these so uh, the uh, the numerator of the first tile is b which we can find out as the numerator of the first tile in the dominos form as well now the the denominator of the first tile is ca as we can find out in the table form which is also the denominator of ca in the first tile of dominos form just like these the numerators and denominators of the other three uh, of the uh, next three tiles are also the same moving on to the next slide now i'm going to explain an example to show how is post correspondence problem actually solved so here in we are actually having two lists a and b and we are having three tiles so uh, for uh, solving post correspondence problem we uh, don't actually have any algorithm we actually need to use a process so what is the process actually we need to take one tile from the numerator and denominator which will start with the same value so if we take uh, the first tile from a and b we can find out that both of these start with one so we can use this or we can use the second one since both of these start with one as well but when we come to the third tile a starts with one but b starts with zero so these are not the same so initially we are discarding the third tile and we can choose from the first or second tile in this example we have started with the second type so in the numerator we have 1011 and in the denominator we have 10 and from this we can also find out that the numerator has three extra ones moving on to the next slide now to compensate these three extra ones in the numerator we will need uh, extra ones in the denominator as well so for that we are adding the first tile here so what does the numerator become the numerator becomes 1011 as it was in the first tick and another extra one is added the denominator becomes 10 and triple one is added we can still see that the numerator has uh, an extra one for this we are moving on to the uh, third step and we are uh, once again adding uh, the first tile again so from this we can find out that the numerator is 10111 1, and another one is added and the denominator becomes 10 triple 1 and another triple 1 is added now from this one we can find out that uh, we are having an extra one in the denominator to compensate this we are moving to step 4 and we are adding the third tile since in uh, post correspondence problem we uh, need to use all the tiles to solve the problem so we are using the third tile here after using the third tile the numerator becomes 10 triple 1 1 1 and 10 is added and the denominator becomes 10111111 and 0 is added so if we compare the string of the numerator and the denominator we will find out that both of them are same 10 uh, 5 6 ones and then another zero so the final solution becomes 2113 so how the final solution is actually formed well in step 1 we have used the second tile so the final solution starts with 2 in step 2 we have used the first tile so one in the third step we have used the first tile once again so it's another one and in step 4 we have used the third tile so it's three so the final solution is 2113 and that's how this problem of post correspondence problem is solved now the next part of the presentation will be discussed by my friend rigankar rigankar over to you thank you sir 
Thank you, Niladri. Very good evening, sir. My name is Vriganko Bromo, and my topic is undecidable of PCB problem. The post correspondence problem is undecidable. There is no algorithm to show that the PCB can be solved through this process. We can prove in the following ways like to prove the PCB is undecidable, we can uh, we need to reduce the tuning machine to PCB. Consider the tuning machine aim to stimulate. Uh, PCB into the string W can be represented as the uh, as you can see. Now, now moving on to the next slide. Now on the next slide, if there is a match in the input string W, then the tuning machine M holds the accepting state. Uh, this uh, this halting state of the tuning machine is accepted uh, into the problem of uh, of a tuning machine. Since the accepted problem a tuning machine is undecidable, so the PCB is undecidable. To force the stimulate of M, we, uh, we can make the two modification of tuning machine M and one changes of uh, to our PCB problem. Now uh, M on the input W, uh, we can uh, attempt to move the tape head beyond the left in, uh, into the end of the input tape. If the input is uh, empty, the string if we can, we can use. The PCB problem starts the matching the first dominoes UI by VI. This is called the modification of PCB problem. Now moving on to the next slide. Now uh, moving on to the next slide, we, uh, we can see the example. We are taking the second uh, tile initially. The numerator is BAB and the denominator is BA. For the for, for extract B into the numerator, we use the first tile. The numerator becomes BABAB. The denominator becomes B A A. The, and now adding to the third tile, the numerator becomes B A B A B B B A A A. That, that you can see the new and the denominator becomes B A A B A B. So the numerator and the denominator are not equal. Even the infinite choices, the numerator and the denominator will not be same. Hence, it can be said the post correspondence problem is undecided. Neha, thank you, sir. Uh, myself Neharaj and uh, I am going to discuss some variants of PCP. So a variant of PCP is considered where two different index words are allowed providing that one of them that uh, one of them can be only thing Neha the only thing it actually at least it is a uh, this PowerPoint it should be in the presentation mode start from beginning okay, presentation sir. mode yeah thank you okay sir yeah uh, thank you yeah okay sir so many variants of PCP have been considered. One reason is that when one tries to prove undecidability of some new problem by uh, by reducing from PCP, it often happens that the first reduction one finds is not from PCP itself, but from an apparently weaker version. The first variant of PCP is circular PCP, circular post correspondence problem. The circular PCP is undecidable variant which asks whether indexes uh, I1, I2 and uh, so on can be formed such that alpha I1, alpha I2 to alpha IK and beta I1, beta I2 uh, to beta IK uh, are uh, conjugate words that is they are equal modulo uh, rotation. Uh, and uh, uh, with this I would like to add that uh, this variant is undecidable. Now, then one of the most important variants of PCP is the bonded PCP, uh, which asks if we can find a match using no more than k tiles, including repeated tiles. Unlike some NP complete problems, a small variation of the bonded problem of the bonded problem uh, was of the bonded problem uh, was also shown to be complete for R and B, which means that it remains hard even if the inputs are chosen at random. Now another variant of PCP is called Mark PCP, in which uh, each alpha i, in which each alpha i must begin with a different symbol, and each beta i must also begin with a different symbol. And um, uh, uh, many scientists have, uh, uh, moreover, they showed that uh, if this requirement is slightly loosened, so that only one of the first two characters need to differ, the problem becomes undecidable again. Now moving on to the next slide, we have uh, uh, one interesting embedding problem which is the post embedding problem. So another variant of PCP is called, uh, sorry, uh, 
we have the post embedding problem is another variant where one looks for indexes i1 i2 such that alpha i1 alpha i2 to alpha ik is a subword of beta i1 beta i2 to beta ik this variant is easily decidable since uh, since uh, when some solution exists in particular a length one solution exists more interesting is the uh, uh, regular post embedding problem a further variant where one looks for solutions that belong to a given regular language the regular post embedding problem is still decidable but because of the added regular constraint it has a very high complexity that dominates every multiple recursive function then the last variant of pcp the identity correspondence problem icp ask whether a finite set of pairs of words can generate uh, identity pair by a sequence of concentration now moving on to the next slide here i am trying to find whether the solution of this problem exists or not so in the table a and b are given for corresponding tiles 1 2 and 3 and uh, we will start from tile 1 as it is our only option string made by numerator is 100 100 and uh, the string made by de denominator is 1 and in step 2 we have extra 0 0 in numerator to balance this only way is to add the tile 3 into the sequence now the string made by numerator is 100 100 1 and string made by denominator is 100 100 and then coming to the step 3 there is extra one in numerator to balance we can either add tile 1 or tile 2 let's try adding tile 1 first string made by numerator is 100 100 and the string made by denominator is 100 and 1 so uh, there is extra 100 in numerator to balance this we can add first tile again string made by numerator will be then uh, 100 100 100 and the string made by denominator will be 100 1 1 1 The sixth digit in numerator string is zero, which is different from sixth digit, uh, digit in string made by denominator, which is one. We can try unlimited combinations like one above, but uh, none of combination will lead us to solution. So uh, this problem does not have any solution. Now coming to the conclusion, I would like to add that to prove a language is un undecidable, we need to show that there is no Turing machine that decide that can decide the language. so uh, these are some sources from where i have uh, we, uh, we have taken help to uh, make this ppt and uh, this was all from our side thank you sir very good presentation